Hi, this is Nikita Tonsky, and uh, we are watching the third episode of Building Closure Script Game. Today we'll be trying to get some gaming field on the screen, right? So well, last we ended up with something like this, and I have a picture like this as a gaming field, right? So we'll try to use it as a background, scaled up for us. So let's start by, by, well, by copying this picture to the, to the static folder here. Okay, and let's start with, um, okay, we won't need the state here, and here instead of this, we will have something like background, and inside the background, a field, okay. Uh, I'll explain what uh, each one of those is in a second. Let's go to the style, we don't need that. So we now have background, and we now have field, okay. So background is actually, this image itself, right? So we are going to use background image URL bg.png, right? And uh, the field will be our basic playing field. So we, I'm going to give it a border like this. And it also will have a fixed width and height, right? So uh, this will be 314 and height will be 176. Let's see if we have something else. Yeah, it seems we have. Okay, cool. So let me explain how this is going to work. Okay, so the, uh, I also need to get the body uh, zero mark. Yeah, so this is how it's going to work. So we're going to, well, I don't see the, the field actually. Is there a field somewhere? I should be able to see field, right? No, this is a, yeah, I messed it up. Yeah, so this is the gaming field, okay, cool. And uh, yeah, so the way it's going to work is that we, yeah, let me open the background first so I can explain it. So inside that background, uh, the inner rectangle, which is marked as 16 by nine, is uh, like the smallest proportion of a screen uh, that we will render on. It's actually like resolution can be quite high, right? For example, uh, 1080p is also 16 by nine screen, right? So, but we just use like uh, scale pixels a lot. All right. Uh, for different screens, like for example, for iPad, uh, iPad is four by three, so we'll have to draw some little extra on top and bottom, so that this I include in background. Uh, for some tall screens, like uh, or extra wide screens, like iPhone, we'll have uh, new iPhones, we'll have uh, extra space on the left and the right, and there will be just decorative graphics, nothing, nothing real will be here, right? But inside this inner uh, rectangle, we will have uh, all the interface, all the units, and the, all the stuff, right? So it's basically will be inside 16 by nine, maybe a little bit less. So it is a little bit less because of different screens. So I have this like statistics uh, for different screens, like uh, so for example, this is 1080p, right? It's 16 by nine. We are going to, uh, to scale each pixel six times and we will going to end up with uh, 320 by uh, 180, right? So this is like the resolution that we actually write our game in, uh, and this uh, it will be scaled six times up and we will get uh, native 1080p image with crisp, uh, perfectly crisp pixels, right? And uh, repeating the same technique, so there are different scales for different screens. I figured out the smallest uh, like dimensions for all this and smallest high. So we absolutely must fit everything within these two numbers, this two, right? Uh, everything else is with the just graph extra graphics. So yeah, that's basically 16 by nine. We'll get the most experience, the best experience, the fullest experience, yes. Yeah, so, uh, and uh, the inner field, uh, playing field is field, and the background is everything else. So, um, yes, background actually kind of misses the width and height itself, right? So I'm going... So now uh, there, there must be something here and something here, right? And yeah, but uh, basically what we want is we want 
Well, okay, now let me start. We want the background to fill the whole screen and uh, this rectangle of absolutely plain area being the center of it, right? To do that, we will need a scale function. Let me go here. Basically, the scale is how much we can increase the size of, size of the pixel so that the inner rectangle still fits, right? So uh, it's basic loop. Uh, we start with like Windows V is just window inner V. Windows height is uh, the same. Okay, and we start a loop. We start, uh, oh yeah, and we're also going to use step, which it should be like um, pixel density, uh, one divided by pixel density for rating a screen, for example, we're going to use 0 0.5, uh, but I, I won't bother detecting it right now, so just 0 0.5. For even pixels, we will be using one and so on. So we start by using, by trying this. So we actually try the scale, right? Um, and if this scale blows our field dimensions bigger than we have, uh, bigger than Windows width or Windows height, we should stop, right? So if, yeah, scale multiplied by 314 is bigger than Windows width or uh, 176 multiplied by scale is bigger than Windows high, then we should stop. We actually have to return the previous one. So current scale that we tried and it didn't fit minus the step because we, otherwise we have to increase it by, by step, right? So plus scale step. I actually want to try Try scale. So it's not actual scale, it's a scale that we try. If it doesn't fit, we go back one one less, right? If it if it fits, we, we try the next one. So by doing that, we actually like uh, no uh yeah, so we can do just just that, obviously. Right. If we do that, we will have the whole screen covered, but but we have to scale it up as, as well, right? So first we have to scale it up. So uh, I'm going to use transform here, and I'm going to uh, to use scale, which is going to be, well, yeah, I'm just going to call it scale here, right? And Okay, so basically that means that we are going to scale everything in our game by this factor, right? And uh, it, what it gives us is we will be working on native pixels. Basically, we will have just that much um, that much pixels to work with, uh, but they will be scaled up. But we won't have to think about it, right? The browser scales it for us. It's 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 very really easy and very handy. The other way to work with it would be obviously to multiply every coordinate in our game by, by the scale that we defined here, but this will be like madness, so we don't want to do that. And here we have to divide, here we have to divide the dimensions of the screen by, by the scale, right? So we want uh, the, like, uh, the pixel width be scale times less than Windows width, and then we want is everything uh, be zoomed in by scale, right? So it, it will get back to inner width. The code function is just um, division by the round number. And yeah, uh, the other thing that we need to do is, sorry, uh, yeah, specify transform origin, which is basically from where should the scale go? So we want to scale from top left corner, not from center. So this, this is it. Then uh, the next thing we want a uh, background position, right? And it's going to be center, center, sorry, like this. 
Okay. And now we want this inner gaming field, this white uh, rectangle to be centered as well. To do that, we're just using flexbox, display flex, justify content center, align eating center, right? This is how you center stuff inside. Okay, perfect. So as you, as you can see that almost uh, the height is almost this uh, 16 by 9 rectangle drawn. We have some extra leads on the left and right, uh, which we shouldn't have on this. This screen is uh, 16 by 9, we shouldn't have it. If we were rendering in uh, actual full screen. So if I start, for example, Chrome, right, let's see, and use this picture. If I remember, the, the Chrome has full screen. Oh, I, yeah. Okay, one more thing and I will display you uh, what, I, what I mean by that. So uh, actually two more things, right? So first one, we want this to not to be blurry. We want it to be like pixel crisp, right? And to do that, there is like a magical formula. It's like that. Basically it tells the browser to scale all image like pixel clearly. Yes. It's probably we're refreshing Chrome instead of, okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, now it's pixel clear. And the other thing that we need to do is to, to handle the resize, right? So basically right now, yeah, the first, okay, I keep going to Chrome. The first render is fine, but then resize, nothing changes. So basically we want resize here, right? Um, for that, we are going to write a mix, mix in. Basically we are going to call it on event. We're going to, to need element, event, and, and function, right? So, or callback. Okay, so to do that, we, so basically this mixin will be applied to this application. And mixins in RAM are basically just map with uh, some keys. For example, did mount is a key for when component did mount, that's like state, right? And here, so what what we want what do we want to do here? So first, we oh, yeah we okay. First, we try to find the component which is hidden under RAM React component state. Then we need a function f which will be call back. Well, it's it's not clear what we should pass to callback. I will be passing the component. Workshop well, maybe state. No, not state. Maybe I should pass state. Yeah, my state. But anyways, yeah. So uh, and here we just add event listener event event f right. A sock okay so let me explain so first we add this so the trick is that is that JavaScript doesn't have an API to remove remove callbacks from element without passing the original function. So we have to store the function, the exact function somewhere, right? So we're storing it in state under this key. Uh, and we only need it to do unmount. So basically, this is almost it. state. Um, yeah, so basically, yeah, we, we're trying to find that, that, that uh, key in the state, which will be passed uh, stored on a component somewhere. So this callback is stored somewhere. And basically, the only limitation of this stuff is that we can only call 
uh, put only one listener on each event, right? But but it should, this should be enough. Okay, let me just reformat this a little. And on event, this should be different actually. On event of dress window resize. This is what we are gonna do. So we are getting component Uh, this is it. So we just need to re-render this component entirely on this side, so nothing more complicated. Let's see if, if we... Uh, if it work. If it works. Yeah, it seems to work, right? So if you scale it like this, we get extra... too much extra space on top or on bottom. Maybe I should put border repeat none, something like that. Ground repeat. Yes, yeah, maybe maybe this is better. Okay, so yeah, as you can see, and this is time when we try the full screen Chrome. So if we resize, if we open it full screen in, without uh, any browser Chrome, we should more or less fit uh, within 16 by 9, right? Yeah, and, and we almost fit, I don't know, just so, so some little extra. Yeah, because we, we, we are drawing actually 314 by 176 and 16 by 9 is 3, 320 by uh, 180, so that's why. But anyways, yeah, it's what we wanted. We have our resize working, right? So it's, it's resizing. And uh, I think that's it. I don't see. What else we can do here? Oh yeah, one more thing. So let let me just do do this. Uh, do uh, basically I want to check that so I do this to check that after while we're working, so I don't need home anymore. Okay. While we are working that it only fires once. Basically, uh, what I mean. Okay, let me let me show. So, if you set up, if you add a vital listener to the window, right, and then you add another one um, under the same for the same event, uh, you will basically have two event handlers, right? We don't want that. So, we want to make sure. So, every time we re-render our application, the previous one is correctly removed here, and we always have at most once. Um, Event listener. So, for example, if we here we are removing something else or we are not removing it at all, so for example, this uh, plus function through the um, state doesn't work for some reason, we don't get error. It just nothing gets removed and we get more and more um, listeners, right? So, here you can see that it fired just once. Uh, can, you see that it fires once for each size. Now, Right, uh, so now what we want is we, we save the application, we see it gets reloaded. So when it reloads, it basically unmounts and mounts over. So for now, if we mess it up, we would see every message twice, but let's see. Yeah, it seems to work, it seems to work. Okay, let me show you how we could have messed it up. So if we remove that, for, for some reason, we, we added a remove listener, but it didn't work. For example, the function passed here, or we, we could make a typo in, on event or something like that, right? And so for now, we should have, have still one, but if I save one more time and it reloads, now we should have two, and let's see. Uh, we don't, uh, yeah, we, we have two. So each event is reported exactly twice because, because now we have like two um, listeners, right? And this is not good. It's not really good. So yeah, this is it, I think. This is more or less it. Um, let me return that. And I think that's it. Uh, so next up in our show is what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, some, well, basically set up a data script database, uh, configure transactions, configure re-render re on changes, and maybe put some units on the field. So stay tuned. Uh, yeah, bye-bye.